So what we're going to be looking at the next few days are word problems. Remember in logarithms at the end of logs, we looked at half-life and exponential growth. Some nerdily cool, yes, tricky, but some nerdily cool questions. Well, trig has huge applications as well. First of all, just reminding you of a word. The word sinusoidal means that you can graph it as a sine or a cosine graph. It says this. A function whose graph resembles the sine or cosine curve, whose graph goes up and down, up and down, up and down in a periodic fashion, is called a sinusoidal function. Doesn't mean you have to use sine. In fact, you're going to find for most of these, we'll find cosine is the easier equation to come up with. So the graph of a sinusoidal function is called a sinusoidal graph. Many periodic phenomena have sinusoidal graph, any graphs. Anything that oscillates and comes back to where it starts from. For example, the time of, time of sunrise as a function of the day of the year. Days get longer, June 21st. Days get shorter, December 1st. Days get longer, June 21st. Days get shorter, December 1st. If you graph it over time, you'll find that the, sun, the sunrise and sunset, the daytime lengths, form a beautiful sine or cosine curve. Oh, and I can even tell you what the period would be, 365. That would be the length of one curve. What would the amplitude be, Mr. Duick? I don't know. The length of the longest day divided by two, because it goes up and goes down. Oh, uh, the height of a chair on a Ferris wheel is a function of time. If you've ever been on a Ferris wheel, Ferris wheel goes up, Ferris wheel goes down, Ferris wheel goes up, Ferris wheel goes down. If you graph it with respect to time, you form a lovely sine graph. In fact, anything that moves in a circle, you can write that as a sine equation quite wonderfully. Uh, tides. Tide goes up, tide goes down. Those of you that are in my physics 12 class from yesterday, alternating current. Current goes this way, current goes that way, current goes this way, current goes that way. There's all sorts of applications to trig functions. Lots of them. So we're going to look at a few. Today I'm going to be giving you the equation and we're going to be solving them with our graphing calculators, which you want to get out right now. You'll need. If you don't have a graphing calculator here, sheepishly come borrow one from up here. Tomorrow, well Friday, I'm going to give you the word problem as is, and I'm going to say, let's find the equation. At two, Carson. Batteries are dying, but I think they're still good for a bit. Okay? So, in this lesson, I'm going to give you the equation. Next lesson, we're going to derive the equation. And yeah, that is the trickiest part, but do not despair. I will try and show you Mr. Duick's kind of approach to get there. Completely dead? Not even working at all? Uh, bring him next class, please, because we're going to use him. Let's keep going. Uh, most often, the equations used will be functions of time. So the, the x variable, Shannon, won't be an x. It'll be an x on our calculator. It'll be a t in real life. The f of t. The period of the graph will be the time units. Graphical methods will be used to solve problems and determining a suitable window is an essential feature of this solution. Let's walk through one. Example one. The minimum depth, d meters, of water in a harbor, t hours after midnight, can be approximated by this function here. 12 plus 5 cos of 0.5t. Now the only thing I don't like about this is the order that they wrote things in. We would normally write it this way. D of t, you can write this down. We would write 5 cos point, whoop, 5t plus 
we wouldn't write the 12 in the front, we would tack the 12 on. Because we always wanted the amplitude to be first thing, and then the trig function, and then B, and then any phase shift. I don't think there is, oh, not a phase shift this time. And uh, the 12, I, ooh, was the vertical displacement. Okay, so here's our graph. Oh, and I guess we're going to graph between 0 and 24, one day, one 24-hour period. A says, find the maximum and the minimum depths of water in the harbor. So we need to remember how we graphed trig functions. The first thing that we looked for was the vertical displacement, which was this number. The vertical displacement is what here, Itzel? 12. Then we looked at the, because that was vertical, and they're asking for maximum and minimum depths vertical. Then we looked at the amplitude. What's the amplitude of this trig function? See it? And this time I'm not giving you the hint. I'm asking you to remember where the amplitude appeared in an equation. What's the amplitude? Amanda, five, right? Amplitude, five. Vertical displacement was? Which was also the middle of our graph. So this graph is 12 high to start out, and then from here it goes five up, five down. Five up, five down. Oh, if you go five down from 12, what's your minimum? You go five down from 12, what's your minimum? Seven. If you go five up from 12, what's your maximum? 17. Okay. In fact, you may remember, Nathaniel, we actually gen uh, did a generic range. Guess what we were asking is the range. The range was d minus a, d plus a, we did it algebraically. That's the displacement minus the amplitude, that's your lowest. The displacement plus the amplitude, that's your highest. Period. It says determine the period of the function. Well, the period was 2 pi over b. Ah, uh, what was b? Oh, that was the number in front of the variable x or in this case, the number in front of the t. It's going to be 2 pi over 0.5. Dividing by 0.5, what's that the same as multiplying by? 2. You know what the period is? 4 pi. Let's go to our graphing calculators and let's graph this. Let's make sure we're in radians. <coughs> Clear whatever equations you have here. I guess D will be the Y variable. Instead of a T, I'll put an X. And I'm going to go 5 cos 0.5 X plus 12. I'm not going to hit graph just yet. If you did, that's no big deal. But I need to pick a good window. So, view window. What do you think I want my domain? my x's to be. And I'll give you a hint. The question actually tells you. Amanda, uh, that's one number I need between what and what. The question tells you. Amanda? Yeah! Isn't that, didn't I just say that's the x value there? And they say, what do you want me to graph it between? What's my x min? Zero. What's my x max? 24. Scale, I think going up by ones is going to be too crowded for me to read. How about let's go up by twos? Every two hours, put a hash mark. Y min, what's the lowest this graph gets? What are we answer in part A? What did we answer in part A? What's the lowest it gets? Sorry? 
Seven. What's the highest it gets? Seventeen. Now I have a preference, Cassandra. I wouldn't take marks off if you went from like six to eighteen. I always like to see the ground, so I'm gonna go Y min zero. Y max. What's a nice round number that's a little bit bigger than seventeen? Twenty, sure. What would be a good scale to go up by? I'm gonna go up by fives because the the Y value, the screen is narrower. I think even up by twos would be awkward to read. I'll go up by fives. And there's my graph. Tide goes down. Tide goes up. Tide goes down. Tide goes up. Is there anybody that didn't get that? So the question says, write a suitable window. So we would write a suitable window as follows. We would go x min was 0 x max was 24, scale was 2, y min was 0, y max was 20, and my scale, I went up by 5s. That's how you would write a graphing calculator window. We use square brackets traditionally, and we write it in the same order. Min, max, scale, min, max, scale, and that way any teacher who looks at it knows what window you use. Okay, now let's answer some questions. Holly, what does D want me to find? Stop. Here's what I hear. Find a Y value, because is not D sitting where the Y normally does? Okay, start over. Read it again, please. Find a Y value. If I give you an X value. H how do I know 2 is an X value? Uh, what's sitting where the X is? What letter? Which stands for? Time. You know what? Given an X, find a Y. That's one thing I'll ask you to do on your test. You know what the other thing I'll ask you to do is? Given a Y, find an X. So let's, given an X, find a Y. How do we do that? Very easily. If they give you an X value and you want to find the Y value that goes with it, hit your trace button. And if you hit trace, it, you should get a point appearing. Maybe not the same one as me, but you should get a point appearing. What X value did they give me in this question, Holly? What X value did they give me in this question? Two. By the way, what if they had said 2 p.m.? I wouldn't put in a two. You know what I put in? A, what would I put in? A 14, okay? Anyway, but 2 a.m. Just type two. Trace, and if you just hit two, it should say X equals two in the bottom left. And if you hit enter, it tells you the Y value that goes with it. Oh, you know how deep the water was at 2 a.m.? 14.7 meters. Meters? Yep, it says depth in D meters. By the way, the other way you could find this, Amanda, is you could go just in the non-graph menu, 5 cos 0.5 times 2, close bracket, plus 12. But my argument is, if I'm going to type that, why not just type it here with an X and then I can reuse it over and over and over and over. And, and so if I'm going to type in any long equation, Ryan, almost always I'll just type it into the graphing section. Especially if I kind of know that I'm going to be using it over and over and over, which you will be. E. Sabrina, can you read E to me, please, out loud? Nice big voice. Y value. Oh, how do I know 8.5 meters is a Y value? 8.5 what, Sabrina? And uh, the depth D what? And that's sitting where the letter Y normally is. See, I put it all together. The units tell you an awful lot. Okay, so given a Y value, point, keep reading. Yep. By what time? Oh, find an X value. See, I put that together. Okay, how am I going to do this one? Well, I mean, if you remember, we did this with logs. If they give me a Y value of 8.5, we graph it as Y2. So 
So y equals and y2, 8.5. There are other ways to do this, but this is the most visual. Because if you hit graph, um, I'm pretty sure it's got to leave by that time. And it can't come back in until this time. And then it's safe in the harbor from here to here. Oh, but it's got to leave by this time. And it can't come back in until this time. Oh, did the question ask what the first time was? Or did it ask for any time, Sabrina? Starting at midnight, by what? Oh, starting at midnight, by what time must it leave? Uh, it has to leave by this time, which looks to be about 2, 4, a little past 4 a.m. Oh, no, wait a minute. We can do it more accurately than that. How can I find out exactly what this point is? Find where these two graphs do what? Oh, intersect. Second function, calculate. Intersection. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Guess, I'll move close to the left-hand intersection since there's four intersection points. I'll move my cursor right to there. Is that a hand up, Nicole? No, nope, just playing with the hair? Okay. And enter to get a... It'll use that guess to find or approximate the root. 4.7, 4.69. Uh, I'll go 4.69. Hours. Oh, still got a problem. This question didn't ask for the answer in hours. It said to the nearest what? Minute. Okay, so 0.69 hours is how many minutes? Oh, huh. You know what? Let's look at easier numbers and see how we change those from hours to minutes. And we'll do the same thing with 0.69. If I tell you we have half an hour, how many minutes is that? 30? How would I change a 0.5 to a 30? Oh, okay. If I tell you we have three quarters of an hour, how many minutes is that? 45? One quarter of an hour. How many minutes is that? 15. If I know the hour as a decimal, how do I change that to minutes? What? Yeah, times by 60. So you know what I'm going to do? This is going to be 4. Can you go 0 0.69 times 60 on your calculator? Clear, clear, clear to get to the math menu. 0.69 times 60. Oh, you know what? 440, just past 441 a.m. If it's not out of the harbor by 441 a.m., it's stuck there because it's going to scrape on the bottom. What if it doesn't get out of the harbor by 4.41 a.m.? When can it leave then? I think... Right here. Right? After that, the water's deep enough. Okay. Second function, calculate. Intersection, first curve, second curve. Guess. Well, there. Enter. 7.87 hours. 7.87 hours, which is 7 hours and how many minutes? 52. So if they don't make the first, they're stuck for an extra 3 hours waiting for the tide to rise. Tide goes up, tide goes down. Tide goes up, tide goes down. Turn the page. In a certain town in British Columbia, the time for sunrise for any day can be found using that equation. Huh. What's the amplitude of this trig equation? Can you see it? 
def what's the amplitude of this trig equation? One point uh, not negative. Right? We said amplitude is always positive. One point seven nine. Okay, what's the phase shift? You see it? Seventy eight to the right? Yes? Y to the oh yeah, back it's bracket, right? What's the vertical displacement? Six point three. What's the period? Two pi over two pi over three sixty five. It's a little weird because they put part of the coefficient here and part of the coefficient there, but I'm pretty sure that's the coefficient. Okay. You know what? Let's write that down. The period is 2 pi over 2 pi over 365. Oh. Katie, how do I divide by a fraction? In fact, you know what's gonna you know what's gonna work out too when I go two pi divided by two pi over three sixty five and then flip it and multiply. You know what happens to the two pies? In fact, you know what? That was sneaky of them. They put that two pi there just so that they knew it would cancel. Because you know what? The period for an entire year should be three hundred and sixty five. Right? What do we say the phase shift was? 78 to the right. And what did we say the vertical displacement was? 6.3. Let's type this in and then we'll pick a good window. So clear whatever equations you have, making sure you're in radians. How do I know radians and not degrees? I think the 2 pi suggests that, yes? Uh, negative 1.79 sine 2 pi bracket x minus 78 close 78, 78 close bracket divided by 365. I'll type it in the same order that they wrote it. Plus 6.3. Can anybody see the mistake that I've made? Oh, I forgot to close off my trig function bracket. Okay, should look like that. Enter. Now this one, I guess D is my X value, which is the day of the year. My Y value is T time. Okay, window. What's the period of this graph? How long is one wave? Steph, you know what? I think a good X min would be from zero to 365. We'll do one year. be a good scale to go up with by years. You know what? Let's go every 30, which isn't quite every month, but let's do a scale of 30, roughly once a month. By the way, why do we have 365 days in a year? It's how many days it takes to go around the sun. That one's fairly obvious. It's also the Babylonians who were very fascinated by this and gave us some of our mathematics. What's a nice round number that's really close to 365 that has something to do with going in a circle? It's why there's 360 degrees in a circle. They picked a nice close number close to 365 and they said, let's break a circle up into that. The other number that they loved, the other base that they did much of their math in was not base 10, I wish it was, it's base 60. Where else do we use base 60 all the time? I just give you a hint with that last word. Yeah, time. It's, it's, it's the reason there's 60 seconds and 60 minutes in one hour instead of 10 of something in one hour and 10 of something in one minute, which would make way more sense to calculate, 
because the Babylonians like the number 16. We still use their stuff. Hey, Y min. Okay, what was the vertical displacement of this graph? 6.3. How low will it get? Well, the amplitude is 1.7. You know what? 1.8. 6.3 take away 1.8 would be down here. Ah, eh, I want to see zero. How high will it get? 6.3 plus 1.8. You know what, Katie? How about 6.3 plus 2, just to do some rough math in our head instead of 1.8? 8.3. What's a nice number that's slightly higher than 8.3 that's really nice? 10. Sure. What would be a good vertical scale then? Let's go by ones. Graph. In January 1st, on January 1st, the sun rises fairly late. June 21st, the sun rises very early. December 21st, probably right about there. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. So A says write a suitable window. This is the window that we picked. How would I write this? 0, 0,365, comma 30. 0, comma, what we go up to? 10, comma 1. Now, this says use the formula to determine to the nearest minute. When the sun rose on May 7th, the 127th day of the year. What are they asking me to find in this question, Steph? Ah, I agree with you. They're asking me to find time. They're asking me to find a Y value. You know what that means, Matthias? They must have given us an X value. What was the X value? Where D is the what, Matthias? Read that little phrase to me. Ah, it's got to be that. Okay, so I got my equation here still. Go to my graph. If they give me an x value, that's when I use the trace feature. And I say, okay, x is 127. So I hit your trace button, x is 127. Then I hit enter. And I get 4.96 hours, yes? 4.96 hours. They want the time to the nearest minute. So sometime just before 5 a.m., what is 0.96 hours? How many minutes is that? Times that by 60, please. Four, four what? 4.58? So on May 7th, the sun rose just before 5 a.m. in this particular town at this particular latitude. C. Cassandra, can you read C to me, please? They told me 7 a.m. You know what, Cassandra? I think they gave me a Y value, T. And you know what they want me to find? An X value. How am I going to do that? Oh, Y equals... Y2, that's where I send a Y value across of 7 a.m. What if they had said 7 p.m.? I wouldn't type in 7. What would I type instead? 19. By the way, the sun never rises at 7 p.m., so that would be a dumb question. But just be careful of your a.m.s and p.m.s. I guess it rises at 7 a.m. twice. Find the first one. Find the second one. Day 55. 
which is just about two months into the year. So since February, you know what, right at the end of February or beginning of March. Day 284. I have no idea when that is. I mean, I guess sometime in October ish. Okay. All sorts of applications here. So, what's your homework? Well, take home quiz and then number one. Number one says the alarm in a noisy factory is a siren whose volume fluctuates. Louder, quieter, louder, quieter. Hey, you know what? Any alarm that does that kind of noise, any siren, that's a trig function. Has to be. It's given by this equation. Cross out F. Number two, satellites. Um, number four. Uh, I'm going to skip five. Then do I want to do three? I want to do sum of three. Let's see. We're going to go. 3a, 3b, for 3c, you know what, actually I'm going to go all of 3, I'll, I'll live with number 3, ha, that was silly. So how about instead of A, B, C, and D, how about I just circle the three, Mr. Dewey? Yeah, shut up, Tyson. So right now, one, two, three, four, skip five. Okay. You got take-home quiz as well. We got one more quick thing to show you.